I'm on the campus of Capital University attending the annual conference of the Hymn Society in the United States and Canada. There are many people here who think very deeply about worship and music, and I'm asking a number of my friends why they think it's important for church musicians to continually introduce new music to their congregations. Why should we learn together in worship? So, why should, uh, why should churches engage new music? I can talk about that. Churches need to learn new songs because they're, they're disciples. And Jesus said, come and learn of me. Churches like to keep things the same, uh, to protect what they treasure. Um, but churches have no choice but to change. The only question is, are they going to change and grow or are they going to change and die? And we have the received wisdom that, that live and learn. But I think the question is the opposite, it's learn and live. I would say that musicians first need to encourage themselves. That the same reason that applies for them and for me at the core is about spirituality. So in my case, what I know very well and has blessed me in the past and is powerful, at a certain level I control it. And at a certain level, it speaks to me up to the place where it speaks to me. And if God is God, there's always something else. To get stuck singing and experiencing the same God, that means then that that is God. And then that's an idol, it's not God. Um, because God, by definition, is ultimately never fully known, to quote Brian. Jesus was a carpenter, carpenter, and he was a teacher. He was a brother, and the faith taught us every day is different. And why don't we share our the good news and joyful news in every day and to our congregation? We have uh, their community life, and uh, with uh, share the happiness, but we also have to share the joy, the sadness, and that multiple message and gospel to us is we all need to have a new thing every day. And then churches are biblical communities, and one basic fact about the Bible is it's always revising received truths. So Jesus said, you've heard it said such and such, but I say unto you. And when he said, love your enemies, he was, I think, revising what wisdom there is in the Psalms about reserving hatred for those who are God's enemies. But Jesus took that and said, no, um, love your enemies. This is what the kingdom is all about. And so songs need to be that kind of thing where they re-understand old truths, but in new ways. Jesus was preaching from the same texts that the Pharisees and the scribes were preaching from. So if the gospel message were about preserving something, about conserving what already was, then there wouldn't have been any conflict between Jesus and, and those that he was confronting. This is the work in which God is involved in bringing newness to the created order that it might come to fullness and consummation. And that it means not destroying the past, but remaking, reshaping, and embracing what God is doing in front of us to bring the past into the full consummation of the future. And I don't see how we can do that without embracing that which God is um, activating and working and enlivening now in the world and tomorrow and the day after. You know, music is, in fact, in essence, a creative thing. So even when we engage old music, old hymns, old cantatas, old anthems, one is making a new thing because you can't help but do that. Um, if you understand music as an artifact, as a thing which is to be reproduced rather than reinterpreted, um, then one arrives at simply a box of, of things out of which one pulls artifacts. Um, but if one understands music as always a new thing, by nature always a new thing, a creative act, look, behold, I am about making 
a new creation, then the line between old music and new music becomes blurred necessarily. Um, and therefore, um, to create music is, is part of the musical act. And so making new music, <laughs> making new music is actually part of making old music, um, as well as engaging new thought. Um, one always engages new thought in music. New music because uh, the Holy Spirit is always at work. And uh, if we don't engage in new music, I believe that we're uh, theologically stating that worship is a museum piece. So uh, when it comes to the, the breadth of literature, uh, the church has to lead the way in terms of the kind of world we live in, in the 21st century. Uh, so it's, new music implies uh, not just a breadth of musical styles, but a breadth of theology, a breadth of how we embody the music, a breadth of soundscape, uh, so that we can lead the way in terms of how the Holy Spirit might be evident to us. You know, I think it's important that uh, congregations continue to create Experience new music uh, in worship, in particular because the world is always changing. God stays the same, but the world, the people, the context is always changing, and God is always building the church and calling the church for this time and this place. I think we fail if we simply um, hold on to what came before without both recontextualizing that for this particular time and place, as well as asking what is happening here now and finding language for that, uh, then we fail at our jobs. Uh, we are not the most faithful to the task as God calls us to be. And then churches are prophetic communities. They have to be or they become something else. And these days, the churches I find are kind of like Abraham and Sarah. They're wandering and they're at the same time wondering, will we have any children? And, and so what will create children in a way uh, is, is what you might call painful possibilities. God says, you know, you're going to bear a child. It'll be in your old age, but you'll bear a child. And so churches need to believe in that and then ask questions based on what God says. What songs do is they prepare people to be aware of what God is already doing among them and, uh, and be ready for those painful new possibilities. I think when we sing one another's songs, it's like walking a mile in their shoes. And as the church, as the people of God, we're continually called to get to know our neighbor and walk with them and serve them. And we're also called to continually ask, who is my neighbor and how am I welcoming of my neighbor as my fellow journeyer in Christ? So I think then we're called to always sing one another's songs because it helps us to form relationships and appreciate the experience of our brothers and sisters in Christ and to continually grow in our love and our appreciation of all of God's children.